You have an Armat and the 3D model in Clue Flight just spins and gradually moves on all of the axes. That is the accelerometer probably, not the gyro. Let me tell you what you can do about that. The issue is that the 3D model spins and goes crazy. Now hang on. Let me, hang on. Good thing I had that right here. So the 3D model is based on the accelerometer, but which is why, by the way, if you go into the CLI and turn your accelerometer off, you'll see that the 3D model doesn't move. My 3D model moves. But the accelerometer is actually really slow to read. And so the way that Clean Flight does it is, it, I don't know the actual timing, so don't hold me to this, but it reads the accelerometer like 10 times a second. And in between, it uses the gyro to do basically dead reckoning, right? And it updates the, the status like 10 times a second from the accelerometer because the gyro is, has accumulated error. It's like saying, if I push down the pedal of a car and I go 10 miles an hour for one hour, I know I've gone 10 miles, right? But I didn't go exactly 10 miles an hour, so eventually I'll get off. That's kind of what's going on there. The gyro is used to update the position of the copter, uh, and the accelerometer is only used to update it you know, every slowly. What I mean by that is, then is that this, if this model is flipping out, you could have either a bad accelerometer or a bad gyro. But if you had a bad gyro, the copter wouldn't fly. So you'd probably know. Here's how you can tell though. Go to the sensors tab and notice the gyro and the accelerometer are both up. And what you may see is that the gyro, it's just sitting on the table right now. You may see that the gyros are all zero but the accelerometer is drifting. Now notice the accelerometer is showing one, that doesn't seem, doesn't seem right. Well, <laughs> the accelerometer is showing one half G on the Z axis, which is a little strange because I definitely am on earth. So I don't know what's going on there. This should be one G right here. Something is up with that. That's clearly not right. Uh, but zero G on the X, Y axis, because of course it's level. Now, if I turn it on its side, those will shift. Now I'm getting, this is clearly one G scale. Oh, I see. That's it. That's it. No, half a G. Oh, well, I don't know what the answer is there. But um, what you may see is that one of these numbers is way out of whack. So if the copter is flat on the table, you should see one G or perhaps a half a G, although I have no idea why, on the Z axis and zero G on the X and Y axis. If you see anything else that explain, could explain why the copter is kind of going out of whack. But you said the copter spun out of control and the accelerometer shouldn't do that because the accelerometer doesn't measure rotation. So maybe you have a wacky gyro after all. The bottom line is go to the sensors tab, look at your gyro line, it should say zero. None of them, see if I move it now, now I'm wiggling it and it's all over the place. If it's sitting on the table, but one of the lines is doing that, you have a bad gyro. And if it's sitting flat on the table and you read anything other than, well, apparently a half a G, although I have no idea why, I would think one G is the right number, and zero G on the other axes, again, you may have a bad accelerometer. Let's see. Definitely the accelerometer on takeoff, it spins out of control. Okay, so if you are in acro mode, then you are not using the accelerometer at all. That is a great troubleshooting tool. If you aren't sure if you have a bad gyro or a bad accelerometer, put the copter in acro mode. If you take off and it spins out of control in acro mode and you see the 3D model spinning, then you got a bad gyro. I'm sorry to say, 99% you have a bad gyro. The only answer is to replace the board. Um, that's what I would say about that. I, I, I mean, no, it can't even be. I was going to say check your RC command to make sure you have don't have your you know your yaw stick deflected, but that wouldn't cause the 3D model to spin. The real kicker that you have a bad gyro is that the 3D model spins when the copter is just sitting on the table. That's that's the real. It has to. You could try a calibration. You could calibrate the accelerometer, and of course you can calibrate the gyro using a stick command. But you sh the gyro is automatically calibrated when you power up anyway, so you really shouldn't have to do that. Yeah. Uh, on the fence about the QQ190. Yeah, I, I, I'm a super fan of, of the QQ190 since I saw it. And again, I, I mean, I have mad respect for Shendrones. 
And I, I'm glad that so many people love their frames because they deserve the, so much success for what they do. But I, I'm a QQ190 guy. I would buy, if I was spending my own money, this is the one I would buy. I hear so many stories about people who, like, they, they bust these, these right here. Why are these horns here? This is not good design. It looks nice, but a sharp spot like that right at the front means that as soon as you go into a tree, you focused all the force. Whereas this one, look what's going to happen when you go in a tree here. It still protects your camera, but it's spread out. It, nothing's going to break, hopefully, right? That's, that's smart design. Um, this looks sexy, but in fact is worse design, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so... So anyway, um, is there a gyro dead band? No, there's a gyro low pass filter. You can use the, the gyro L low pass filter if you have too much gyro noise. That's what you're talking about. But the problem is you, uh, no, you, you, but if you've got a constant spin like that, you could calibrate, try calibrating the gyro. The stick command is, I don't know that you have to look it up. It's, um, I don't know. You have to look it up. Uh, but if it's like I said, the gyro is automatically calibrated when you first power up. So that's, that's not, uh, it shouldn't have to do that. And it probably won't solve your problem. Um, the thing is, here's the thing. Like if your receiver is flaky and your signal is dropping out when you're flying, I don't see how you just go and this, you're not doing this. This is a hypothetical. If your receiver was flaky and your copter was dropping out of the air, you've got to solve that. You can't just be like, yeah, well, sometimes my receiver, my copter drops out of the air. Your receiver like has to work. It's not like sometimes my battery telemetry stops working and I, I might run my battery a little low. Yeah, okay, whatever. And likewise, if if your gyro is screwy, you've got to fix that. Like you can't, it's not safe to fly the copter with a bad gyro. Unless some Sometime you're going to just crash into a tree, but sometime you're going to crash into a car or somebody's face. So if you have a flaky gyro, you've got to just bite the bullet and replace the board. Like you could say, well, what if I calibrate every time right before I fly? Well, maybe, but that's kind of a big chance to take with something as important as the gyro. That's what I, that's my opinion.